Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing great. Welcome to the MSAT Achieve Math Explanation video. This is the model paper 2 and I've split it into two parts. The first part will have about 25 questions and the next part the, the other 25 questions. So the, there are total about 50 questions in this model paper. It's just like how you have your exam. You will have a total of 50 questions and all the type of questions are mixed and varied. Now, before we begin, I just want to remind that I'll be using the shortcut methods and I assume you have the basic knowledge of math. Say, for example, whatever you studied in grade 9, 10, 11, and at least a little bit of knowledge from Tuval is very essential for solving MSAT exam. So please be thorough in your basics. And one more thing is about the calculator. I'll just show you the calculator which I'm using. This is the FX991ES Plus calculator. Now, if you have anything lower than this model, I would highly encourage you not to use that. Try to get this or the higher model because, uh, you know, there are many functions in this. Say, for example, equal to can be used and you can solve equations in this. You have equation, you know, like simultaneous, quadratic, cubic. This is very essential, you know. So please try to use this. And anything higher than this is fine, but don't go to anything lower because it'll be very hard to solve uh, simple problems. Now we will begin with the questions and these are the scores, score descriptors. We have gone through this in the previous video and these are the type of areas and they might be having some other areas as well. Say for example, differentiation, integrations and stuff. We have gone through this in the previous video. And now we will start with questions directly, whichever are directly and simple. I'll just solve it directly. Now, please try to solve it by yourselves. You can pause it now, solve it and then continue with the answer. So we will use the calculator here to solve it directly. All you need to do is type this question as it is. It's 7 square minus 4 divided by 7 minus 4 plus 5. This is a fraction and this is a whole. And the answer is 20. That's it. Next one over here, you need to find the simplest form. Again, use the calculator and find this answer directly. Or you can even solve it over here. But this is divided by, so make sure, reciprocate this and may, uh, change the sign to multiplication and solve. Here, I'll just use the calculator. It's negative 16 divided by 21 divided by minus 8 divided by 3 and the answer is 2 and 7 whenever you find an easy question just do it quickly because some of the questions will take a long time so you can balance out the time now we here we have to evaluate this for x equals 4 and y equals 1 the starting ones are generally easy if you're doing the practice exam so 2 into 4, x is 4, minus 3 into x is 4, and y is 1. Just put it out, the answer is minus 4. Now we need to simplify this. We, we will have to use the distributive property over here. So all you need to do is multiply this minus 5 throughout, and you'll be having minus minus becomes plus 5u cubed minus 20 plus 20v squared. Now, where is okay? This is the one. This is the correct answer. You can simply, you can just try simply. No, you can't simplify further. It'll just be more complicated. You can't get. See, this is wrong. Okay, U and V. You won't get this. No, this is the correct answer. So easily, you can just do the distributive property and check it out. Sometimes they might have simplified one more step or rearranged it. Maybe this term would be first or this term first. So just make sure after applying the FOIL method, the distributive property, check all the options. If the answer is not there, try to simplify one more step and then check the answers. The question number five is about rotation or translation, basically. We have been told three figures shown below on the coordinate plane are congruent. That means all three are the same figure. They have just been transform like in the sense not trans uh, it's transformed yeah it is either dilate not dilated they are congruent so it is either rotated or translated only these two can happen okay nothing else or reflection also can happen 
So now we need to identify the statement that describes the sequence of transformation from this figure to the figure 3. From 1 to 3, what happened? You need to look into the options and then make a decision. But now, first thing, let me let us see what is rotation. Uh, reflection first. Reflection, if I'm doing along the x-axis reflection, so that is a very bad line. Okay, over here. This x-axis acts like a mirror and this will be reflected like this, something like this. Okay, it's, it's not appropriate, but it will be accurately reflected. Or if I'm reflecting along y-axis, what happens? This will be the answer, something like this. Now, they are not concerned with this one. They are concerned with what? They are concerned with 1 and 3. So can I tell reflection along y-axis, then again reflection along x-axis? No, that is wrong. When I look at this figure, I understand there has to be something to uh, something with rotation or translation. But if I do translate, it will be the same figure. And how will I get this? No. I can more appropriately understand this has fallen down like this, right? So how can you make this upright fall like this, left uh, uh, horizontally? How it will uh, how it will transform? It is from rotation. See now, look at this figure. If you rotate it 90 degrees, the base is rotated. Everything is coming down to 90 degrees. Everything, every part is moved down by 90 degrees. Okay, so this happens. And then I can see it is a reflection of this particular rotation, right? See, this is up. Now, if I reflect it along x-axis, it will be like this something. See, this is reflections, right? The straight line is first and then this is sliding down. Okay, so I can easily tell it is something to do with rotation and reflection. Let's look into the options first and then I'll come to this in a while. You can see they have asked the rotation of 90 or 180. First, let's look into these. It cannot be rotation of 180 degree. If it was rotation of 180 degree, this one, see with 90, it will move something like this. If it was 180 degree, it would have gone down like this. Okay, this will, okay, it should have gone up. Something like this, okay. This would be 180 degree rotation. No, and it would be in the, uh, if you do 90 degree rotation, it will be in the next quadrant over here. If you do 180, then it will move down over here. Can you see this? This is not matching. So it is not 180 degree. Rotation cannot be 180. It is either this or this. Okay, so I rotated it, it will be something like this over here. After this, what do I do? Do I translate it down? No, if I translate it, the shape is not matching because the shape over here is like this. If I translate, it's going to be like this, but it's changed. That means it's reflected. After this, it is being reflected. So translation is wrong. Reflected along x-axis is correct. So this is one way you can easily eliminate the other three options and tell the correct answer. This is the answer. But what about other, uh, what about this thing? This is the exact coordinates. This gives you the exact coordinates what happens during rotation. It is important to know because the other parts, say for example, reflection or uh, translation, it's very easy. If you're translating, first you need to know the coordinate. Imagine this point coordinate is minus five and three, right? If it's a translation of three units to the right, all you need to do is add. That's it. Add what? Right x-axis, right? So it will be three units like this somewhere over here. This point will move. So just add plus three to x-axis. That's it. Translation is very easy. Just adding. If it is to the left, subtract. So the x-axis up and down, it will be to the y-axis. So minus five and three. That is very easy. Reflection, you can easily map it out. What is the difference from the x-axis? One, two, three over here. So it'll be something like this. It'll go down. Again, it is easy. But what about rotation? You can do one thing. If you have a protractor, you can draw a straight line to the origin and then draw 90 degrees and then same distance must be marked over here. You will get the answer. But it is very, very complicated like that. So what we do is we have this formula chart. If you're rotating 90 degree clockwise, clockwise means like this over here, anti-clockwise is left side. What happens is you have this formula. If it is say minus 5, 3, 
this changes this y value becomes the first coordinate for the rotated figure that is 3 over here and this x changes its sign and becomes over here so if you're rotating this part instead of minus 5 comma 3 you'll be 3 and 5 that will be the point now let's do this one minus 8 comma 3 becomes 3 and positive 8 so you can see this base over here is now here and same way over here what is this minus 8 comma 6 it becomes 6 where is 6 over here and 8 same way over here this last point is remaining it is minus 5 comma 8 where is minus uh, 8 is over here and minus 5 becomes plus 5 it's over here you can see this is the rotated figure this is the exact using this particular for 90 degree if it was directly to 180 degree just change the signs and it will be x y itself okay if i wanted this say for example i would just change the sign minus 5 becomes positive 5 5 this y uh, y axis positive 3 becomes minus 3 it will be over here and same way over here x is 8 and minus 3 and then over here we had minus 5 becomes plus 5 and 8 and lastly we have 6 over here so this is the 180 degree rotation and same way if you want uh, you know 270 over here the formula is given and you can do it this is the actual thing if you really want the coordination the coordinates I've explained it over here but generally for your MSAT exam I've seen some other questions as well. If you understand what's happening, rotation 90 degree, it moves down over here, then reflection. If you're thorough with it, you easily can eliminate the other options like we did earlier and get the correct answer easily. So this is how you solve this problem. Now we move on to the next question, question number six. The graph below shows the relationship between weight of bread flour and cost in dirhams for bread. So this is the weight, x-axis is the weight of bread flow and this is the cost how much it will cost if you're buying say a uh, half kg of bread it'll cost you two dirhams one kg of bread is four dirhams and so on so what is what is not true let's check over here the point one comma four that is x value is one and y value is four shows the cost of 84 for one kilo of flour yes this is correct now over here they're saying 1 comma 4 let let me just mark it let me mark it over here 1 x value is 1 and 4 this is the point 1 comma 4 what does this mean this means for 1 kg of this bread flour it costs how much 4 dirhams yes this is true what about 0 0 0 0 shows it is 0 kilograms of flour if you're buying nothing it's no money yes correct this is also correct what about 0 0.5 and 2 0 0.5 means half kilograms of flour. Yes, half kg of flour to uh, two dirhams. Yes, that's correct. That is also correct. So obviously this must be wrong. Let's just see this. The point 0 0.25 and 1, 1 is over here, this point, tells us what? It is 25 fills for 1 kilogram of flour. Wrong. 0 0.25 means it's 250 grams of flour for 1 dirhams. But they are telling other way around. They are telling 1 kg of flour for 250 grams. Uh, sorry, 25 fills, which is wrong. So this last one is an error. Now we are in the seventh question. It is in a school, there are three girls for every two boys. There are 650 students in total. How many students are girls? This can be solved easily and calculated in various methods. But I will tell you, not a long method, it's a short method, a ratio method. Why? Because now here you have been given total. But what if you have been given the number of boys or number of girls? Every time this particular method which I'm teaching will work. So first of all, how many girls are there? Girls are three, boys are two, total is five. So the ratio of girls... The ratio of girls is 3 by 5. The ratio of boys is 2 by 5. This is the ratio. Now you have been told total is 650, right? 
If I multiply 650 by this particular ratio, 3 by 5, I'm going to get, this is girls, the amount of girls, the number of girls. 650 into 3 by 5 is the number of girls. If you want boys, it's just 650 into 2 by 5. That's it. Once you get this ratio, see how many number of girls are given, how many boys are given. That's the number of girls, but add the total divided by 5. For boys, it's 2 by 5. That's it. Now you need to take out your calculator and solve. Here, what we do is, we need number of girls only for this question. It's 650 into 3 by 5. The answer is 390. Okay. But what if now, I will just change this question because uh, this might, va uh, the variation might come for the exam. Say, for example, um, here, instead of 650 students, they had told 390 girls were given. Girls are there. This is given. How many total students? Total. We need to find the total or number of boys and number of boys. How do we do this? Okay, let's solve for both. The method, see now the ratio method is much easier. Why? Because I know the ratio for girls is 3 by 5. Okay, and ratio for boys is 2 by 5. Now, all you need to know is what is given. Number of girls is given. If number of girls is given, you have to take the ratio of girls. So, the total number of students, total students, okay, multiplied by the ratio of girls is equal to number of girls. Okay, this is the thing. Now, what do we know? We don't know the total number of students x. That is what we need to solve for. I'm just giving you a hypothetical question. This must be multiplied with what? The ratio 3 by 5. That will be equal to 390. Now, what you do is x, you leave it. Take this to the other side. That is equal to 390 multiplied by 5 divided by 3. The answer would be, over here, you can just do the do in the calculator. Let, let's do it over here. So... It would be 390. I know the answer is going to be 650, but let's just do it to show it's 650. That's the total number. If you want the number of boys, you need to find the total. You can't directly jump to that. You need to find the total that is 650. Now, just do 650 multiplied by the ratio of boys. You will, you will get the answer. That is going to be 260. So all you need to do is 650 multiplied by 2 by 5, it's 260. I hope this is clear to everyone. Why I did this second part is just to explain any value is given, you can find each other. Okay, if, you're, if you have the total number of girls, you can find the total number of boys or the total number of students, anything it can be found out. Okay, most important thing, get the ratios. Then just remember this one formula. I'll write it out again. This is very important. Always the total number of students, total multiplied by the ratio of boys or girls will give you the number of the particular gender. If it is number of ratio of boys, you'll get number of boys. If it was in ratio of girls, it'll get number of girls. That ratio must be multiplied to the total. Now then, we go to the next question over here. They have told the table below defines a function. Okay. The table is a function and select what can be replaced for A. Now, what is a function exactly? Now, okay. First, before that, let's look into this question. I'll tell you this, this method can be used in various different questions and eliminate the wrong answers easily. Now, for now, what I'm doing is I'm not going to, uh, don't even if I don't have the knowledge of much knowledge about what is a function. Let's look into the options. A is either minus 5. Okay, this can be minus 5. Is it correct? Let's wait. It can be minus 1 or 11 or 17. What is common? Which is the minus 1 is already there. 11 is already there. 17 is already there. So these three are already there over here in the x-axis in the input. So 
I would highly suggest that minus 5 is not there. So minus 5 is the correct answer. So I would go with minus 5 and that is the correct answer in this case. So you can easily eliminate the wrong answers like that. But I'll tell you why exactly minus 5 is the correct answer here. Whenever you have an input, say any value, you should have one specific output. You can't have two inputs and having two separate outputs. Look over here. This 13 is there right in the output. Is it there anywhere before? No, it is unique. So I can't say 17 as an output of 5 and, uh, you know, again, 17 as an output of 13. This means the function is wrong. Now, uh, how you can understand this is, imagine a vending machine, you know, a vending machine, right, where uh, you can put the money and type the code and you will get something out right so now you put a code say the code for uh, you wanted say water okay you wanted water and it was two dirhams you put the two dirhams and then you have to press the number the number was two three five okay you submitted this number two three five and water falls out and comes out right that's the thing same way imagine now in this case in that vending machine, if you press 17, you get water. 5 is denoting water. Imagine, okay? You press 17, you'll get water. But now, if you put another 17 and you're getting, say, soda. If you press 17 over here, you're getting water. If you press 17 again, you're getting a soda. Does this make the machine work? You're inputting 17 and you're getting two different answers for same so input 17 your water and soda this doesn't make sense the machine is broken then right so now this is this is the best way to understand it's a not best way it's an easy way to understand whenever you put an input the output must be unique okay the output must always be unique but you can have uh, this is the thing you can have 17 and 16 giving water to Two also are giving water, that's fine. Because the rows, the water, everyone wants water. So there are many rows with water. Even 17 and 16 gives you water. That is fine. But the un input is unique. The output can be the same, doesn't matter. Okay, because it's both two drums. You're pre pressing 17 or 16, you're getting water. But imagine if you press 17 and over here also 17, you're having the soda. Now this is a problem. What to give? Water or soda? Which is the thing? So that's one way to understand. So always remember, whatever input you have, the answer must be unique. Now, if you have, sorry, you must have, you, you cannot have two same inputs with unique outputs. That's, that's what it is. So if I put any like this, minus one, see minus one is five. How can it be minus 13? Doesn't make sense. Uh, if I took to 11, 11 is already giving output minus one. If I give again 13, it is having two outputs, doesn't make sense. So only possible answer is minus 5 here because with minus 5 I'm getting a unique output, that's fine. I hope this is clear. Now here to identify the equivalent expression to the expression shown below. Now these are very easy. Okay, there's a shortcut method for these as well. I'll tell you in a while, but now let's just solve this up. It's distributive property, multiply this quarter inside. 1 for this quarter will be 12 by 4 minus 6x by 4 plus 8 by 4. Here it is 3, over here it is 2. You're remaining with 3 plus 2, that is 5, minus 6x by 4. 6x by 4 can be simplified by 3 and 2. It's 3x by 2. So it is 5 minus, see this is the answer. Okay. Because when you simplify this, there's no further way to simplify this. Obviously, this must be the answer. But there's one more method, but it takes a longer time, but it's a calculator method. So I will tell you that. Let's take out our calculators for now. Here, let's assume a number for x. And I had told in the previous videos, that that is the exam videos, this method can be used, uh, you know, but you need to be careful with the x value you assume. So I used to usually sometimes take 0.5. I'll tell you, in this particular question, you won't be able to get the correct answer if you assume few values. Say, for example, we take x is equal to 2. 
okay if you take x is equal to 2 and substitute over here you will get one answer say you got some answer and you should check the same thing by putting x value over here you must get unique answers but sometimes this is flawed you won't get the correct answer okay i will show that uh, wrong case in a while but first i will show you the correct method so you need to assume a value i will choose x avoid one avoid two as well if you go to a value say it is having point say for example 2.5 these are good values most probably you will get unique answers for all the options okay most of the time now let's do this what you do is instead of this x everywhere substitute 2.5 let's do it in the calculator all you need to do is one fourth so it's one fourth multiplied with 12 minus 6 into now don't put x you need to put 2.5 plus 8 close the bracket and what's the answer it's 5 by 4 that's 1.25 let me write it over here now let me substitute this x value everywhere in these options 14 into 14 minus 6 into 2.5 is it the same answer no i need to check for the next one i know this was the correct answer so 5 minus 3 by 2 into 2.5 i must get the correct answer same 5 by 4 yeah but let's check the others as well okay so it'll be uh, let me just do it over here so at 2.5 means 5 by 2 so it is my multiplied by 5 by 2 here you will get 35 by 4 it's some whole number no it's not and even over here it'll be 5 by 2 it'll be uh, 13 fives are 65 by 4 so no so now you can just to double check 35 by 4 it's it's yeah prime number so it won't but 65 yeah even 65 by 4 it won't so this is it you can't simplify them further now that's the reason we get this answer but now i will show you one more thing imagine you took the question uh, took the x value as 2 x is equal to 2 now look over here uh, 1 fourth multiplied with it's 12 minus 6 into x value is 2 plus 8 close the bracket the answer is 2 okay when you put the x value 2 you're getting the whole answer as 2 all these whichever gives 2 must be the correct answer now let's do it minus 14 minus 6 into 2 here also you're getting 2 let's see the next one 5 minus 3 by 2 2 to cancel it'll be 5 minus 3 yes it's also 2 over here this is also correct now which is the correct answer now we are remaining of the uh, questions so i mean options 7 by 2 into 2 you won't get the same you'll get 7 over you'll get 13 minus 13 so these two you're getting the same answer in such case if you get two same answers you can slowly change the sex value take another and try again i hope this is clear now, if you know the distributive property, if you know to solve, this method is not at all use, uh, uh, useful. You can directly solve it. But I'm telling you the shortcut method because sometimes you might have a unique equation. In such cases, you can use this, okay? Or something happened, you just don't understand how to continue over here. Assume x values and solve it. Try assuming 2, 3, 4. But if you're getting two correct answers, then take 2.5 or 1.5 and you'll get unique answers whenever you take a decimal value you'll get unique so that's how we do this particular problem this was the answer we are now in the question number 10 here a customer buys a book that costs dirhams of 35 35 dirhams which has been discounted by 25 percent but the customer still has to pay six percent VAT on the discounted price of the book okay what is the total amount of the customer total amount the customer pays for the discounted book okay so here what happens is the original price is 35 but there is a discount of 25 percent so this 35 dirhams becomes less i think so it'll be you know 25 percent of this is about nearly eight or something you know it'll be reduced so this will be reduced down and then uh, it's close to 7.75 I guess so it'll be reduced over here and then you will get another price it'll be about 26 something 26 or 27 dirhams okay 
that will be the discounted price because you went to the shop and there's a 25% sale so this 35 dirhams you see you save some money 8 dirhams and you get it for 27 dirhams but that is not over in that 27 dirhams you will have to pay a tax for the discounted price that means it will be 27 dirhams right you will have to pay 6% it's nearly 1 dirham less than 1 dirham you know you will have to pay as tax so now let's see how to solve this exactly First of all, you need to know a few of the formulas. Here, whenever there is a discount, it's a reduction. Tax is, uh, whereas tax, see, has to pay VAT. VAT is tax is plus, discount is minus. So discount price, discount price formula is given as original price. Whatever is the original price, minus why minus because whenever it's discount it reduces than the original isn't it that's the thing original minus the discount discount whereas the you know whereas this uh, tax rate okay tax price after tax okay after tax what happens is it is original price original price Plus, whenever you pay tax, it increases. Therefore, it will be adding on plus tax. This is how it works. Okay. Now, here what happens is the discounted price, you're discounting this particular book. It is 35 dirhams minus discount is always the original rate. Okay, again, not the formula. Discount or tax or anything is always original original rate original price multiplied by rate anything with which relates to percentage is always this okay now your original is 35 multiplied by the rate that is 25 percent it's quarter one fourth okay 0.25 now we will have to use our calculators and solve this here we have 35 minus because it's discounted into 25 percent shift and directly you can do this or you can put 0 0.25 will be the same answer the answer is 26.25 okay the discount price is 26.25 well and good but that's not the answer this would be what he has to buy uh, he has to pay but there is again six percent tax on this so that means this now original value over here is discounted price okay i'll put over here discounted okay because now the original for this is the discounted price because we're taxing only the discounted not for this not for the 35 only for 26 so here what happens is 26.25 plus 26.25 into the rate of six percent now if you put this over here uh, it's 26.25 plus because it's tax 26.25 okay at the 25 26.25 multiply this by six percent okay it'll be 27.83 uh sorry it's more than one dirham you know because uh six percent of 26 it's a uh, 26 it'll be yeah, obviously more than one dirham and that's the answer okay it's nearest fill so it is 83 fills 26 Okay, sorry, it should be 27, my bad. Over here, I have written it wrongly. I just realized it now. It should be 27. This is 27. Point 0.83. Okay, whatever this answer, this over here you got is correct. Just make sure you use these formulas and whatever the answer you get, it will absolutely be correct answer. So this is the thing. One important thing to understand over here is discount always use the original price and put minus sign. Whereas tax is always more. Now you might remember, you know, if you have the SIM cards over here, this allowed or do, whenever you take a package, especially because I, I put the net package or something in it, this allowed, um, or the calling package, what happens is they'll tell you it's like 50 dirhams. But then when they charge it, it will be 52.5 because they add the tax later on. So whatever the rates is not inclusive of tax. So over here also, it was 
how much 26.25 but then later on the tax was added so it became 27.83 fills i hope this problem is clear over here and now we move on to the next one it's about triangle and rotating okay i hope you remember the previous problem about rotation rotation of 90 degrees um, i hope you remember the formula so now let's look into this one over here a triangle PQR shown below is a rotated 90 degrees clockwise about the origin about the origin from year 00 to form a new triangle P dash Q dash R dash which is then reflected across X axis to form PQR okay again another uh, you know transformation what are the signs of the coordinate point of R now over here you don't need to do all this you know what is that you don't need to remember all the conversion coordinate no need they just want the signs they don't want the value they want to know the sign so i will do it roughly over here first transformation let's see they want to know what is the r double dash after double transformation so let's see the first transformation from pqr to this there is a 90 degree counterclockwise. See, R is over here, right? Rotated. If it was clockwise, it goes to this quadrant. No, it is counterclockwise. It goes back. It comes over here. It will be somewhere over here. Say it's 2 minus 2. It will be uh, this one, 2 positive 2. This is the point, R. Even if you don't know, you know that this point will obviously fall over here. This P will be over here. Q will be over here because it's counter backside. Next, what is happening? which is then reflected along x-axis so now the point over here right this is again reflected along x-axis so it goes back over here only so look this r went up over here now it's brought back down it will be in the same quadrant this is quadrant one two three and four so it's in quadrant four what ha what happens in the quadrant four x is positive y is negative so x is positive and y is negative that is the correct answer simple right you don't need to solve anything just by understanding the transformations you can easily get the answer moving on to the question 12 another easy problem don't waste your time please solve this in calculator as quickly as possible let's take out our calculators here it is root 27 okay over here they are asking sum sum is plus root 108 okay it's 9 root 3 i remember when i was solving this a few weeks ago when i was trying to find the answers i was not getting the correct answer over here you know the reason i was multiplying instead of plus i was putting multiplying and okay it's 54 then i was simplifying all these questions and i was not getting the correct answer so please make sure you read the question properly this was sum now i remembered so it's 9 root 3 that's the answer that's it very easy now we have question 13 here rectangle f g h j is translated six units right and one unit up to produce its transformation f dash g dash h dash j dash this dash means it's transformed what statement about the side lengths of the rectangle of the transformation is true okay let's see the options now um, it's translated see whenever it's translated you need to know the side lengths never change now let's measure this fg and gh that is us okay fg is how much minus 2 to minus 5 it's 1 2 3 units and gh is 1 2 3 4 5 units 5 and 3 units okay so the answer must be 5 and 3 is this correct sorry uh yeah 5 this is the see we can easily eliminate the options how fg can only be 3 and 3 this is wrong this is wrong now what is gh value it was 5 not 6 this is the correct answer so easy why because it's translated whereas if it was dilated now if they are told dilated by 2 units uh, uh, you know 2 is enlargement so it would be multiplied 3 would be 6 and so on okay you should know what has been happening here it is translation it does not change at all that's why this answer now about the question 14 
A survey about television viewing preferences was given randomly random, to randomly selected year one and year four students at a college. The results shown are below. What exact, what is the exact probability that the student is a year one student given that the student prefers to watch reality shows on television? Okay, this is a probability problem and it's a very easy one, you know, the table one. I hope you remember this method. Um, grade 10, I believe we have to do this. Year one, year four. All the year one students who watch sports and television is 83. Reality shows is 110. Comedy series is 60, uh, 67. Now, we don't need to focus on sports and comedy series. Why? Because they have told prefers to watch what? Reality shows. Just focus on reality shows over here. So this is year one and year four. Now, we want the exact probability of a student selected from year one. What is the probability of year? How many possibilities for year one? 110 divided by what is the total possibilities of reality show? How many total possibilities are there? It's 110 plus 103. So it's basically 110 by 113. Sorry, 213. So it's 110 by 213. That's it. So that's how we can solve it. Uh, yeah, this is prime, so you can't simplify it further. That's the answer. Question number 15. The population of small city in 2010 was 36,000. In 2015, the population was 43,800. So you can see the initial population, the initial time that is given is 2010. And the population was... 36,000. So whatever this value is the initial population, initial. And then after five years, over here T is equal to five because five years are passed. And this is the, after five, this would be the final population Y. Okay, because the formula, uh, we take Y as final population. If the growth is exponential and the growth occurs at the ra same rate, that's a constant rate, what will be the population in 2020? Round your answer to the nearest whole number. I remember, see, all these problems I had solved a few weeks ago. Now I'm directly doing these. But I remember, I think so, this is the problem where I faced with the challenge of getting the correct answer. Whenever in MSAT you're typing out the answer, you know, the answer can be, you know, misleading. I, I will, when I solve this, I'll tell you what exactly I'm meaning because I, I don't know how many, uh, you know, variables to take when we continue the question. So I will tell you what's the best answer in a while. Now let's try to solve this one. The formula we know y is equal to a the in initial rate e power kt. This is a basic growth rate formula. It's plus the growth rate is k plus y because it's growing. The population is growing. If it was minus, it's dk. Now here y we have first the relation of 2010 and the population, 2015 and the population. Consider this to be the final population. 43,800 equals, what is the A value? A is the initial population, 36,000. And uh, E value is, oil is number itself, K. What is K? K is the growth rate constant. That is what we are solving for. Time is 5. Now let's put this in calculator and solve it directly. Here you need to just substitute. Okay, I will tell you one more thing. When I did it for the first time many weeks ago, I remember I'd taken this as 43,000 instead of 43,800. And oh my God, I was like struggling so much because I was just not getting, uh, you know, uh, I, I took the wrong answer itself. But then I realized one more time when I did it, I got different answers. So it, answers were varying. Then I realized the first time I didn't take the, uh, you know, the values properly. So make sure you don't do that mistake in exam. It was a silly mistake, but sometimes, you know, you might do that. So just to learn from others' mistake, I'm just telling that into five. Now, over here, once you type this equation, you can press shift and solve and you'll get the answer. That's the answer. Now, here it was quick. But if it's going to take a long time, what, what happens is exponential means it's power. So the thing is, sometimes it'll take a long time to give you the answer because powers are being computed. It takes a while. You can do a hack. Whenever exponential is there, press LN 
on both the sides, not one side, both the sides, ln over here as well, and close the bracket. Entire thing, just close the bracket. What natural logarithm does is it's inverse of exponential. This goes off and whatever is power comes down to the base and becomes multiplication instead of power. So now when you press shift and solve, it will be very quick. The answer is the same, but it will be very, very quick. So that's uh, the thing. Now let me just uh, write it out over here, the k value. k is equal to 0 0.0392229745. Now you might be thinking, why did I write so much? I'll come to this in a while. Now that's fine. K value is found out. What is the main question what, what we need to solve? That is, at the year 2020, same formula, but Y is unknown for 2020. A is same 36,000. E is Euler's number. Now we know the K value is 0 0.0392 multiplied by time T. What's the time from 2010 to 2020? It's 10 years, so t is 10, and now we need to solve this up. Let's uh, do it over here. Now we just type 36,000 multiplied with e is over here. Now t is 10 multiplied with k. Now just now I found out k, so it's stored in the answer. So I put the answer, let me just show you. The answer stored is the k value. So what I'll do is I'll just use that for now. 36,000 multiplied with E, that is shift and over here, ln, and you'll get 10 multiplied with the K value. If I press equal to over here, I'm getting a whole number, proper whole number. But imagine you wrote down this answer and you put this. K is 0.039. The answer is so varying, so much variation, you know. Even if I put 2, there is a variation. If it's whole number over here, I would write 278. Still, it's not the correct answer, even if I take four digits after the decimal point. So what you need to do is, please take uh, four exponentials, right? Take more values. Don't take just four. One, two, three, four. Take more. Two, two, at least six. In six, you're going to get almost the close. See, over here also, you will go wrong because it's four, right? Even six is not giving... 7, 8 is yes giving. So if you take about 8 digits of decimal or if you can store the answer as ANS and use it correctly, press it ANS, then you will get the accurate answer, okay? So nearest whole number over here, if you take 8 decimal digits after, you know, after the decimal, 8 digits of decimal, you're going to get the exact answer. It is 290. That's the whole number. So this is my, uh, this was the problem because see, in the MSAT exam, you need to type the answer. If you write 40, 53 points, some whatever answer we got, we got 271. If you use four decimal, that would be an error because there will be only one correct answer, I believe. So this is a bit tricky. So be careful when you're solving such problems. If possible, try to store the entire K value and answer and then solve it up. Otherwise, take eight decimal digits and then you can get the answer. Next over here, we are dealing with the question six about line segment A dash B dash. The line, this line above them means it's a line segment. That's it. As the end points at given over there, it's four comma minus two and 16 comma 14. And is the image of AB after a dilation of half centered at origin? What is the length of AB? Okay. Now you can't directly jump to any answers over here. The thing is, they want the length of AB, but they have told the line segment, uh, the dilated line segments, you know, the dimensions. So what happened is, I know it's a half di dilation. That means, imagine this was the line AB. This has been dilated by half, and this is the points now. A dash, B dash. They want the length of the original. So just find this length. If this length was, say, 10... Then we know we need to multiply this dilation by two times because the original was reduced by half. So if you multiply this by two, you will get the original. This will be 20. I'm really not sure what is the answer. Let's solve it. Then only I'll come to know. So what you do is basically find the distance between the, these two. Distance formula. Distance formula is given by square root of x, 
x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square. Okay, this is the thing. Now what we do is we just have to put it in calculator. Here x2, see over here x1. Okay, let me write it out over here. This is x1, y1, x2, y2. So the same thing, I'll not write it over here, directly substitute it. Square root. Okay, uh, x2, it's 16 minus 4 the whole square plus 14 minus of minus 2. Minus 2 the whole square and the answer is 20. Okay, I hope that's correct. Everything is substituted correctly. So the answer over here distance of A dash B dash is 20. Now this has been dilated by half. If the original was X, that was multiplied. The length of AB, this AB is X, okay, was multiplied by half and then we got how much? 20. So how do we get original? Just take half to the other side. AB will be 20 into 2, that is 40. That's the answer. Now, if it was, say, dilated by 2, that means it should have been half of 20. But in this case, it's dilated into half, so it will be answered as 40. That's it. So just remember the distance formula, very important. We will have to use this many times. So just put the coordinates, find the distance. Now, here we have another problem. Okay, this is linear regression. Now, this is another interesting topic. Omar has a piece of rope. He ties a knot in the rope and measures the new length of the rope. He then repeats this process several times. Okay. Basically, he has a rope. He ties a knot, keeps on measuring. He, some of the data collected are listed below. So, we don't have all the data, but some of this data, number of knots, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the length is given over here. See, when he tied four knots, there was length 64 centimeters remaining. Then after some distance, he did another knot, 58. Again, one more knot, 46. Again, one more knot. Now, look carefully here. This is not a linear equation. Why? Is the slope same? Is the slope even? No, right? What's happening? The slope over here, from year to year, is 58 and uh, 64. It is to 6. I mean, not the slope, I mean the difference in the y-values. 49 to 58 is 9. Here it's 10. Here it's 7, 8, sorry. See, this distance is varying, whereas x, difference in the x, this is dx, this is dy. dy is varying, whereas x is always the same, 1, 1, 1. So, what is the slope here? Here you can tell the slope is 6 by 1. Here the slope is 9, here the slope is 10, here the slope is 8. What is the exact slope? Do we take the average of this? No, we don't take it like that. So how exactly we solve this? By linear regression. This is a particular uh, concept. Now, let's jump into the explanation of linear expressions. Because I think there is one more problem of linear expression. And the method which I'm teaching right now might be a little lengthy. It's not an easy one, um, but once you learn this, it will be very, very helpful all the time. I have few of these images. This is basically from my own research when I was doing my master's. I was doing a hydrodynamic model and I had to do a lot on linear regression as well. And I didn't know before, I didn't study it before to be very honest, um, but over there I had to study during my master's. So now you can see, my, my my research was basically I was uh, doing a, a hydrodynamic model which will model the salinity in a river. It was a Galway Bay in Ireland, Galway City. There was a bay where there is lots of seaweed culture. And basically I was modeling the salinity to predict the salinity and everything. So oh yeah, these are just the two clips of my thesis. So I was over here trying to manipulate the discharge rates at different discharges, what happens with the salinity and everything I was studying, and over here at different tidal periods. This is not important. These are just out of context. But the data is important. You can see over here, there are various data. Uh, I mean, there are various data. This triangle red is one set of data. And there's a line over here. 
Now you can see these lines over here. R value, uh, say red one, R squared value. What, what is this exactly? Now in simple understanding, now imagine you have a huge amount of data and they are not linearly spaced, but you can try to fit force fit a line and get it in terms of linear in the sense. Now look at this data. It's all mixed up, right? But look at this line over here, dotted line. I got a line which is re closely resembling this as a linear equation. But then this R square value tells us whether this line is close to linear or no. This R square, see it's very low over here. You can see 0 0.23, 0 0.3, 0 0.23. What, what it says is whenever you, the distance is increasing, this is not becoming linear. It's very, you know, uh, chaotic. It's turbulent. All this is mixing up like anything. So you're not getting a proper linear uh, value. Whereas over here, the red value, you can see the red value. When the tidal period is 12.5, you can see all this is closely related, very, very close, 0 0.89 confidence ratio. In the sense, this is almost equal to R. Okay, so this tells you it is more like a linear equation. So this is this is where you use linear regression. This is very, very basic what I told. And these are a few of the formulas which you must remember. So generally, linear equation, you know y is equal to mx plus b, right? But we don't use mx plus b for linear regression. We always use a plus bx. y is equal to, uh, if you have written the slope formula, mx plus b, it's the same thing, but just the values coefficients are different. Now, A also can be used, uh, solved by using a huge formula. I have not used that formula because the formula for A is again complicated formula, okay? It's better we use only B formula. You can't do anything. You have to know this formula at least. But then you can easily solve A by other tactics. Now we will do that. This is a bit lengthy. But uh, anyways, see these are the two formulas. Now... Here, we need to make a table and write these values. The first is finding that this is the x value, this is the y value. Anything such as an output like length, this, that and all is y-axis. Whereas x is always like these numbers, 1, 2, 3. Now x is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now this method is same everywhere. Now you must square them up. Square of 4. Then you need to have one more column that is for y and then you need to multiply these two x y why am i doing this look over here n n means what number of values one two three four five n is five that's fine what is x y x y is this summation means i need to find x y and sum them all up add them all up what is uh, summation x means i need to add these all values let me just add them up 4 plus 5 is 9, 9 plus 6 is 15, and over here 8 plus 7 is also 15, it's 30. So summation x is equal to 30. Same way, you need to find the x squares and then do it up over here. 4 squared, 16, 5 squared, 25, 36, 49, 64. Now I need to find the summation x squared, add them all up. What is y values? All these values, I need to write it over here, 64, 58. 49, 39, 31, summation y, okay? And now xy is basically multiplying these two. Now all these needs to be solved and now you can see over here, that is all that is required basically. And this formula is also very important. Okay, now I'm sure many of you might have thought this is gonna take so much time. Uh, yes, that's true, it's gonna take a long time. And especially you can't, you don't have an option to guess. So you need to type the answer for this. One second, let me just go back. You can see over here, the answer needs to be typed in. So you just can't do a, a random guess, it'll be wrong, right? So my personal suggestion would be just skip this problem, go and do the others. At the end, when you have extra time, come back to such problems. Otherwise, just leave them. Do it only at the end, okay? But since it's there, I'm just going to explain it anyways. Now we need calculator over here to find the sum and everything. I had written this problem, everything in detail, but sadly I misplaced it. I'm not getting it, so I'm just going to do it now. 4 into 64, that is 
256. I'll just keep it in my mind and do the next one. 256 and then 5 into 58. It's 290. Let me just write it out. Otherwise, I'll do errors. Uh, first one was 256, 290. And now this one over here, FISA. Okay, this is close. It'll be 300 minus 6, three, uh, 294. Okay, this is going to be 14 to 7. It'll be 20, 28, 28 minus 280 minus 7, 273, I believe. You can just do it in calculator as well. And this one is uh, 240. 240 plus 8 is 248. Now, what, how I did it is, see, whenever you have 49, 39, 31, if it's 64, you can do this, but it'll take a long time. Use calculators. Now, say, for example, this 31 multiplied by 8. It's very easy to split 31 into 30 and 1. And this 8 multiplied with 30, 3 times, uh, 8 times 3 is 24, 0 makes it 240, plus 8 times 1 is 8, 248. Isn't that easy? Same way over here, at 7 and 39. So 7 multiplied by 39, which I'll split it as 40 and minus 1. So over here, 7 times 4, you can easily multiply this. 7, uh, 4 is 14, 28, it's 28, that is 280, okay, minus 7 times 1 is 7, so it'll be 273, you can just do this in mind, you can do it mentally, that's how I did it, easily without calculator, and now then, now you need to sum them up, um, in your exam it's better, you just double check it, but if you're very confident enough, do the mental maths over here. So then now we have to use the calculator because we had to add them all up. I mean, you can do it in your mind, but simply to eliminate the error, I just use calculator. First, let me do this x-wise. 256 plus 290 plus 294 plus 273 plus 248. The answer is 1361. That is summation of x, y, 1361. What about this? It's again 64 plus, sorry, 64 plus 58 plus 49 plus 39 plus 31. It's uh, 241. Let me just write it down over here. Summation y is 241. Now you might be, okay, summation is required. It's told. But anyways, all these are required. Whatever I'm writing over here must be done anyways, okay? And now what do we have? Last, summation x squared because we did x already. Summation x squared, that is 16 plus 25 plus 1436 plus 49 plus 64. It's 190. So we got all these summation values. Now we know n value. Now just substitute in the formula. We have what we need, right? So all you need to do is b equals n is phi. I'm just substituting over here. What is summation x, y? 1361 minus what is summation x? That's 30 multiplied with y is 241 okay divided by n is again 5 multiplied with summation x squared is 190 minus uh, summation x the whole square that is 30 squared now if you go deep into this formula you will see a relationship okay but now there is no i mean the slope formula you know y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 similar to it but not exactly same but you know it'll take a long time just so that you remember this, you know, you can find a pattern by yourself, try to figure it out. There was a pattern, there is a pattern, sorry. Now put this all in the calculator. It'll be five times 130, 1361 minus 30 times 241 divided by five times 190 minus 30 squared. And the answer is negative 8.5. Yeah, I think so. That's correct. I just hope it's correct. 
after doing all this, it's minus 8.5. So now we got B value. So Y is equal to, we need A and B, that these are the two unknowns. B is found out. But what about A now? Now this as another formula, but that will require more other values. You know, already this is taking so long. So what I would suggest is another way to solve this. So you know this y is equal to a plus bx formula, right? What if we find y and x? Now basically this x is the mean, mean of these x values, y values, okay? So what is x dash? That is a mean, that is summation x by n. This is the mean, right? It's statistics basically. Summation x is 30 by n value is 5. So it will be 6 over here. And what about the y? y dashes summation y by n that is um, how much is it Two, 241 over here 241 by 5 okay this is gonna be a big answer nearly 50 but not 50 it's less than 50 so it'll be 241 divided by 5 so the answer over here is 48.2 isn't it so 48.2 over here is y mean, 48.2. Now we got x value, we got y value. Now these two can be used as x and y over here. So all I do is I substitute over here the values. y is how much? 48.2, that is equal to a is unknown, plus b we just now found out is minus 8.5, multiply this with the x value, x value is 6. Put this in calculator, everything. So 48.2 equals unknown value alpha x plus uh, minus 8.5 multiplied by 6. You can press shift and solve. The answer is 99.2. So A value is 99.2 here. So let's just check the answer. A should be 99.2 and minus 8.5. That's the answer. Now, see here BX is first, okay? Whatever we have taken, right? The formula over here. See the previous formula. BX term is written first. Whatever the coefficient of X. That is minus 8.5 into X. Then we got 99.2. That's how we do this problem. I know it's a lengthy one, but it's a very uh, uh, interesting one, you know. So I hope this is clear. And please try to practice a little bit. And as quick as you are, like say solving this summation x, summation y, once you're thorough with this, it'll be very easy. Only remember these two formulas. And even if there are other problems like this, only with these two formulas and whatever I've written over here, with these rows, you can easily solve them all up. You need to know these anyways, okay? But there are some certain graphing calculators and stuff which will solve it, but that's not allowed for your exams. I mean, these are like high, uh, you know, like soft ways or very high conf uh, sophisticated calculators may be solving these. I hope this has been helpful. We move on now to question 18, that is, about triangles, okay, triangle ABC and DEF are similar and their respective vertices are shown over here, okay, identify the scale factor for the dilation. Okay, now, see this one, right, it's triangle vertices. It's better you just find the length of a certain thing because there are certain shortcuts, you know, from here you need to find the difference, from here you need to find the difference and then compare and stuff. But I would personally suggest you just use the, uh, you know, because this might complicate other things. So the best and the easy way is the distance formula. x2 minus x1 uh, plus y2 minus y1, the whole square over here everywhere. And now let's take x1, y1, x2, y2. And again, x1, y1, x2, y2 see they have told a b d and their corresponding side is d so the first two letter a b first over here is d so find the distance for both of these cases in the calculator now all you need to do is substitute 
1 might see the first thing what happened x2 minus x1 it's 1 minus 1 is 0 0 squared is 0 so ignore that only I'll use the second value so it'll be y2 that is 0 0.5 minus of minus 2 it'll be plus basically put the two brackets and then use the square the answer is uh, positive 2.5 you don't even need to put the square and square root why they cancel out each other anyways it's only single term it's positive 2 plus 0.5 it's 2.5 okay the first one let's do the next one now same thing 4 minus 4 becomes 0 so I'll ignore this part I don't even need to put square root and square y because they cancel because it's only single term right see now you're dealing just like this it is square root and whole square imagine this x whole square this this cancel so it's x so just put this it's enough so that's what i'll do your answer will be the same okay it is 2 minus of minus 3 2 minus of minus 3 it'll be plus 3 it's 5 the first answer was 2 let's see this was sorry 2.5 here it's 0.5 plus 2 and here it's 5 this is the thing there is some dilation what is the scale factor from triangle abc to def the scale factor is 2 why because it's multiplied by 2 see 2.5 into what is equal to 5 so take this to the other side x is equal to 5 by 2.5 that's 2 the scale factor is basically 2 the option number is c here that's the correct answer now here we have got one more long problem I'm not sure I, I, I can't remember this problem at all you know so let's see the table below shows the number of hours of daylight on the first day of each month for a city okay what is the average rate of change in hours of daylight per month from January 1st to April okay average month okay this is so easy it's a slope formula that's it now here this is month one two three four till april right we will stop over here this is the x values we can't take jan feb march we need to take one two three four and what about this uh this is number of hours from average from january to april so we need just this and this that's it okay this is the y values this is the x values so let's take what is the slope average rate of change is the slope m is equal to y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 so y2 is basically 13.9 minus y1 is 9.4 divided by april is 4 minus january is 1 see this is y2 y1 x1 x2 whichever th uh, months they mention only focus on those months okay whatever is in between that's it see everywhere it's not evenly changing it's all differently changing but they want from january to april just average rate nothing else average rate it's not linear regression or anything just average rate is like this put it in the calculator and you will get the answer here it is 13.9 minus 9.4 that will be 4 minus 1 is 3. The answer is 1.5. That must be the answer. Okay. 3 by 2 is 1.5. So the average rate of change in hours of daylight per month. So it's 1.5. So every time 1.5 is changing. It's increasing over here. See, but you can see the trend stops over here. It stops after the summer. In the winter, it reduces. But they're not asking over there. They're asking just from January to April. See, December, October, November, December, Jan, all is what? Basically, it's winter, right? Now, from February, March, April, it becomes summer. So, it's increasing in the daylight hours. Here, then, we have one more problem. Okay, this is about the function. We have done similar thing before. Input. The table of values of linear function is shown below. What is the rule for the output of the function when the input is n okay now we here just look at this uh, so what is happening basically you need to see what is happening the slope and then tell what will be the output when this this n means it's any number n okay here the first thing we can do is start with the slope the slope is given by 
you know, m is equal to y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1. Um, now, here we, we need to substitute the values which are existing. You can take these, these, these. I would generally go with x1, x2, y1, y2. Why? Because see, first of all, this is a linear variation, 1, 2, 3, and over here it is 0, minus 2, minus 4, minus 6. I know the slope is minus 2, but for just formalities, I'm going to use the formula. If it is a complicated problem, this formula will come much handy. Now, here y2 is basically minus 2, minus 0, divided by 2, minus 1. 2 minus 1, it will be minus 2 by 1, that's minus 2. M is found out. Y is equal to mx plus b. This is the output y. Right? This is the formula. Y is equal to mx plus b. We need m. x value is fine. It's n and b value. Now we found m. What is b? Now consider any one set of values. x, y. I'll take 1 and 0 and substitute over here. y is 0. m is already found out. Minus 2. x value is 1 plus b. What will happen over here? 0 is equal to minus 2 plus b. What is b value? Take this minus 2 to the other side positive 2 is equal to b. You found out m and b. So y is equal to m is minus 2x plus 2. Now here, instead of x, what do you have? n. When any number minus 2n, x is n plus 2. This is the answer. Now imagine this is phi. It will be minus 2 times phi plus 2 it will be minus 10 plus 2 that is minus 8 the next term would be 8 and then minus 10 minus 8 minus 10 minus 12 and so on so this is for any number n so this is the answer over here minus 2n plus 2 it is very simple it is a linear equation y equals mx plus b make sure you find the m value b value substitute back the x value is known as n so the output basically for the input n is minus 2n plus b. This is another easy problem over here. All you need to do is substitute a value as 4 and then solve it up. So we can directly do it in the calculator here. All you do is substitute a as 4. 4 to the power 0 is 1. It's going to be, you know, 3 itself. But anyways, let's write it as it is. A is again 4 to the power half, that is 0 0.5 or 1 by 2. And then plus 8 into A is again 4 to the power negative 2. That means it will go down, you know, it will be divided by 16 basically. So it's 3 plus 4 half is 2, 3 plus 2 plus half, 5.5, yeah. So that's the answer. Uh, because 3 over here will be 1, this is 1. This will be 2, 3 plus 2 is 5, and 8 by 16 is half, it will be 5.5. Uh, now here we have got graphs, and okay, this is again a very easy one, grade 9 problem. You can see there are two graphs over here. They're touching at one particular point, and then they will just uh, go infinitely and never cross again. So what sort of system is this? Now there is consistent, consistent, inconsistent. We will come to dependent and independent in a while. Consistent means there is a solution. That means two lines touch each other. If two lines are overlapping, like they are the same lines, overlapping lines are also consistent. That means each and everything is a solution over here. That means many lines are the same equation. If you're thinking what sort of an equation, y is equal to 2x plus 2, y is equal to 2y is equal to multiply throughout here, 4x plus 4. Now, what basically happened over here? 2y equals 4x plus 4 is an equation. 2y is equal to 2x plus 2 is equal, also an equation. If I multiply this by 2 throughout, I'm going to get 2y equals 4x plus 4. It's the same equation. It's basically the same line. Just the equations are written differently. These are consistent because infinite solution exists. Here, only one solution. If you have a solution, it's consistent. If two lines are parallel and they'll never touch each other, imagine they're never going to touch each other, then they are inconsistent. There is no solution. But what if they are consistent and they don't touch only at one point, never come again? Then they're independent. 
Whereas if two lines are the same lines, they have infinite solution, then it is dependent, consistent dependent. Now our question is two lines which touches only at one solution, it is independent line. Now we have got a problem, okay, about obtuse and okay, this is again an interesting problem. First, let's draw the basic triangle, okay, this is important, otherwise we won't understand thoroughly what exactly it means. So I will draw a random triangle and then I'll consider this to be A, B, C and A angle is given as 35 degrees. Now we know in this triangle, uh, this triangle chapter, we have to study that Whatever is over here, A, angle A, the opposite side is side length A, small a. That's the side length A. If it's B over here, then this is B, then C over here, this is C. Or it can be changed. Anyhow, this is the basic understanding of a triangle. The same thing can be written like this. A, B, C, fine. This is 35 and then this is A, this is C, B. Okay, doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Your answers will be same. Now, what you want over here is understanding how many triangles can be constructed. First of all, let's see whether this angle is true and can this be a proper tr triangle. 35 is there. No, no other angle is given. But they have given the side lengths. B is 3 and A is 4. From this, what can we do? We have... Law of cosines, law of sines. You can use any of that. But I generally go with law of sines because in exam, students tend to do some mistakes in law of cosines. One simple here and there, you get the wrong. You forget the square root or something. So I will go with law of sines because you can write any way and you'll get the same answer. Sine theta 1 by... Okay, let me write it as A in terms of A. Sine A... Let me just write it properly. Sine A by A equals sign now i will use b because b is given b by b what is sign a sign a is 35 degrees divided by what is the side length a 4 equals sign b is unknown divided by 3 now you can directly put this in calculator this as x but i would always suggest you to avoid that whenever you have sign sign inverse because inverse happens take it to the other side it will become sine 35 by 4 multiplied by 3 equals sine B. Now you want B, angle B. Take inverse on both the sides. Sine inverse of sine 35 by 4 times 3 equals sine inverse sine B. This, this cancels. You are remaining with B, angle B. So just put this in calculator. All you need to do is shift and sign, sign inverse. Now it's in degree mode. Let it be because 35 is degrees, not in radians. Sign inverse of what? Use the fraction symbol. It's sine 35. Close the bracket. Multiplied with 3 divided by 4. And the answer over here, this is the thing. Um, the answer is 25.47. Now, they didn't mention anything about, oh, sorry, it's not about degrees. So, I'll just take 2, okay, nearest 100. So, what did we find out? Si angle B is 25. I will take it as uh, one digit, okay, because it'll be an easy whole number. 25.5. Now, if this is 25.5 and I know this is 35 what should i do i need to find the other angle it will be 180 total degree of triangle 180 minus these two angles 25.5 minus 35 that will be the remaining angle that is 119.5 so now we found out all the angles 119.5 i can stop here why because i can easily tell this is an obtuse angle and it has proper angles and it's closing up but sometimes it's better to check see now since no triangles can be constructed is an option right if this was not there i would have directly told this is your correct answer one obtuse triangle and it's only one okay that's it that's answer not two triangles not a right angle because there's no 90 degrees but what did they why uh, they have mentioned no triangles right there is a law of uh, 
uh, triangle properties okay what it says is there are chances where you cannot construct a particular triangle in certain cases i'll just erase everything and write it again um, see now this triangle is there right we have this was a b c we got 119 we got 0.5 we got 25.5 25.5 and last over here 35 but the side lengths over here was 4 3 what about the side length first find the side length and then we can use a property to check whether this is a triangle or no whether you can complete a triangle this is important why because this option is over here i'll tell you in a while let me first find this how do you find it is by law of sines i'll use sine 35 by 3 will be equal to now which do you want the side length uh b is known sorry b is 3 c is unknown x c is unknown so what i'll do is sine c that is 119.5 divided by x now all i do is just take x to the other side and everything else to the other side so it will be sine 119.5 multiplied with 3 divided by sine 35 close the bracket the answer is 4.55 okay so this is 4.55 sine oh sorry this is not 4. Point, i have taken it wrong this is sine it's not 3 it is 4 why because sine a divided by a this should be 4 i'm sorry for that it is 6.07 okay this is 4 and we got 6.07 okay that's fine now we have three dimensions 3 4 6.07 now the law to prove whether this triangle exists or no is take any two sides random sides okay i'll take this and this 3 plus 4 must be greater than the other side yes this is true now take other two sides 4 plus 6.07 must be greater than the other side that is 3 yes this is true and lastly we will take the remaining two sides 3 plus 6.07 must be greater than 4 yes this is also true why the first answer is 7 greater this is 10.07 greater than 3 all are true so yes triangle can be constructed no triangle this is wrong triangle can be constructed okay so the last option is wrong then what is remaining from the angles we can easily tell this now if you have not found the angles and imagine they have only given you all the side lengths then also you can easily find its obtuse how we got this correct answer how so what you do is which is the biggest side over here in all the sides 0 0.67 square see what is happening to it what happens whether it's equal, greater, less than, when you add 3 square plus 4 square, what happens? Let's see. 3 square is 9 plus 4 square is 16, it's 25, whereas over here 6.07 will be over 36. Sorry, this square, how much is the value? It will be 36.8. So 36.8 is greater than 3 square 9 over here, greater than 25. If the longest side c squared is greater than the sum of other two sides this will be obtuse if it was less than then it will be acute whereas if it's equal it's a right angle so this is one way to check yes this is the correct answer there are various ways okay whichever is easy now the last part what i did for the checking is not required but here you can see they have told can be constructed that means uh, it cannot uh, no triangles can be constructed means there is no triangles it's not possible so that's why i did that check once you checked over here all these three came correct yes with this dimension you will get a triangle and what we got is more than 90 degree one angle so it's obtuse so the option number two i hope you're thorough with this now we go to the next one again about uh, sine and cos. In a right angle triangle, the acute angles have the relationship shown below in the equation. What is the uh, value of x? 
see this you can directly put in calculator and solve you know because it's just the equation um, directly can do it but sometimes you might get an error so what's the best way is make sure what is the right side cos 46 right solve it up what is the answer it is 0 0.69 okay i'll write it over here 0 0.69465 now put each of this sign put all the options 2 into x is how much 20 plus 4 and only one will be the correct oh we got the first this is the correct answer okay all the others will be wrong let me show you if i just change this to 23 it's wrong 7 6 no we got 6 9 let's change this to 24 it'll be more than 7 6 it's 7 8 now now what about 22 It'll be less than this, but still it's not that correct answer. It's 7, 4. So this is the correct answer. We then move to the 25th question. This will be the last question in the part 1. And then the remaining 25 questions will be done in the next part, which I'll try to upload it as soon as possible. I need to record it soon. Um, I'll try to do my best to do it very soon. So this is simplifying problem. It's a rational uh, equations, rational function. So what you can do is plenty of ways to solve it. Okay, I will show you one shortcut way because it's only one variable, right? Whenever we have single variable, assume a value. We have done this a while ago, two or two point five or something like that, and solve all the all the four options. Only one will give you the matching answer. That is one thing. But I'll show you the actual way to solve it. You can take LCM over here, or if you're getting confused with LCM, see the top part, numerator separately, solve it separately. 3 by W plus 7 doesn't have anything in the denominator. So what is the left side denominator? Multiply up and down. 7W divided by W. Why we did not do anything for 3 by W? Because over here the denominator is 1. It's basically 1. So you multiply and divide by 1 is the same thing. That's it. Now, the denominator, same thing, 3 by w plus 5, the denominator on the other side is w by w. Now, you can see that in the numerator only, the common denominator w can be written like this, and it will be 3 plus 7w divided by, what about this? It will be 3 plus 5w by w. Now, I can see this can be cancelled easily, or if you're getting confused like this, keep the numerator as it is, Okay. Now, this second denominator is there, right? This entire thing becomes multiplication rather than division. And this numerator becomes the denominator here. The denominator becomes the numerator here. It swaps. So, it'll be W by 3 plus 5W. Cancels, cancels. What's remaining? 3 plus 7W divided by 3 plus 5W. This is the answer. And uh, that's it. I will do the calculator method as well. We can take our calculators. You just need to assume a value, okay? I will assume, say, 1.5. 3 divided by 1.5 plus 7. The whole thing, okay, I forgot to put the bracket, the, uh, the fraction symbol at the beginning, so I'll use it now. This entire thing, 3 again, divided by 1.5. W value doesn't change. Plus 5. The answer is 9 by 7. So these two are constants and they don't match. These can be directly eliminated. And obviously W is there over here. There's no W. So just eliminate these two. What about the first one over here? Same thing. It should be 9 by 7. Let's check. 3 into 1.5 plus 7. 1.5 is the value which I assume. Let me just write it out. Assume w equals 1.5 and this answer we got was oh my memory is like it goldfish is it 9 by 7 i believe um, let me just check it over here okay it's 9 by 7 thank god and 3 into 1.5 plus 7 divided by 3 into 1.5 plus 5 and the answer is 23 point, uh, by 19. No, it's wrong. So this must be the correct answer. It is, sorry, it is 1.5 into 
and it will be plus 3 here. Same thing up above, I'm just changing it. Multiply this becomes plus and yes, 9 by 7. This is the correct answer. So this is tricks to solve it. And that's the end of this part one of MSAT questions. I hope this has been beneficial for you. If you have doubts, do put them in the comments. I will try to get back to you soon. And do consider subscribing to my channel. You can scan this QR code and subscribe. This would mean so much to me. Please do share it with your friends, who, whoever would benefit from it. If anyone is doing MSATs, please do share it in your class groups or the places. And thank you for all the support. I really appreciate it. And all the best for your MSAT exam and MSAT preparations.